Chapter 3. Misfire. Hart knew he was taking a risk. He didn't care. But his calculation course was ten times more annoying than anything else at school. Which was saying a lot. Hart felt like course needed some excitement. And the risk? Well, that was part of the fun. The sixth grade chorus was trying to learn up on the housetop. Each boy and girl stood in front of a folding desk and each of them held an old song book. The music room was shaped like a half circle and the four step stared stepped levels made it look like kids were standing on risers. The altos kept murdering their harmony part so Mr. Minart was making everyone sing the first verse in the refrain again and again and again. Standing down at the front of the room behind an electric piano, he played the melody with his right hand, swung his left arm through the air to keep the rhythm, and sang out the alto part at the top of his lungs, trying to pound the notes into the heads of about 30 sixth grade girls. He kept having to push his dark hair up off his forehead. His brown eyes flashed warning after warning and his fa as his face got redder and redder. Anyone could see that Mr. Minart was in no mood for messing around. Hart had chosen the classic number 16 rubber band for today's raid. Before stretching, a number 16 rubber band measures 1 16th of an inch thick and 2 and a half inches from end to end. It has an effective range of about 20 feet. In the hands of an expert, a number 16 is almost silent and remarkably accurate. Hart stood at the left side of the room with most of the other boys. His voice was pretty deep, so he wasn't up in the front row, and that was good. Keeping his eyes on Mr. Minart, Hart pulled a fresh number 16 out of his front pocket. He looped one end around the top corner of the stiff cover of his music book. He stretched the rubber band back about four inches and then pressed it against the edge of a book with his index finger. He was loaded and ready. Hart raised the music book and shifted his weight so he had a clear path between Jimmy Lohan and Bill Ralston. He felt his hands begin to sweat as they sang, Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Mr. Minart turned to face the girls, just as he had before, and Hart lifted his finger. The rubber band zipped past Jimmy's right ear, traced a graceful arc in front of the rolling blackboard, bounced once on Mr. Minart's slanted music stand, and then stuck on the front of his sweater, a little tan circle on the dark green wool. Mr. Minart didn't notice it. He did notice a flutter of giggles in the room, but he stopped them with a shake of a hand, and the song went on. Hart should have stopped while he was ahead, but he didn't. He pulled out a fresh rubber band, and before he loaded it onto the edge of the music book, Hart twisted it into a double loop to give it extra force. He was going to put this one up into the fluorescent lights above Mr. Minart's head. He pulled back the doubled rubber band, adjusted his aim, and at the next up on the house top, click, 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 Hart released shot number two. Maybe his finger slipped. Maybe Hart had stretched the band a bit too far. Or maybe he shouldn't have used the double loop. Because the rubber band flew straight and fast and hard, and it snapped smack into the side of Mr. Minart's neck. The piano stopped as Mr. Minart jerked his head like he'd been stung by a bee. He slapped at his neck and ducked his head looking around quickly to try and spot a hornet or a wasp. Some of the kids laughed, and Mr. Minart knew he must have looked silly. He smiled and held his hands up to quiet everyone down. He said, okay, show's over. Let's take it from the beginning of the refrain again. He looked down at the piano, and that's when he saw the rubber bands, and one, of the, one on the keyboard, the other hanging on his sweater. Mr. Minart's eyes narrowed. His lips twitched and slowly twisted into an angry frown. There was a hush moment of calm, and then the storm. Who, he boomed, who did this? Eyes flashing, he snapped up the rubber bands, pinching them between his thumb and forefinger. He shook them out in front of his face. Who, he shouted again, who shot these? He stalked out from behind his piano. Who, tell me right now. A man who gets hopping mad, who gets so angry that he sputters and spits and stomps all around, all red in the face with his eyes bugging out and his teeth showing in a comedy movie or a TV show, well, that can be very funny. In real life, it's not. Realizing that the shots must have come from his right, Mr. Minart spun to face the boys. Now, he bellowed, tell me now, who did this? Mr. Minart looked quickly from face to face, and when he locked eyes with Hart, he knew. You, he pointed at Hart's face. It was you, right? Right? Answer me. Hart couldn't think. He'd never seen a teacher this angry before. All his coolness melted. Hart gave a guilty little nod. In a flash, Mr. Minart had hold of Hart's arm, steering him toward the door. They were out of the room and down the hall to the office in 15 seconds. The man walked so fast Hart had to trot to keep him from being dragged along. Breathing hard, Mr. Minart's face was still twisted with anger. Through clenched teeth, he kept saying, very funny, very funny. The door to the principal's office was closed and Mr. Minart knocked and pushed it open in one move. Mr. Richards looked up from the papers on his desk as Mr. Minart shouted, this, this young man thought it would be funny to shoot me in the neck with a rubber band.
The principal looked from Mr. Menard's bright red face to Hart's pale one. He nodded at Mr. Menard and said, You can let go of his arm. He's not going away. Mr. Menard dropped Hart's arm. Then he held up a rubber band and said, This is the one that hit me in the neck. Mr. Richards looked at Hart. Is that right, Hart? Did you shoot that rubber band? Hart gulped and found his voice. I, I did shoot it, but I, I wasn't aiming at him, honest, and I'm sorry. I was aiming way above him, at the lights, really. Oh, sure, said Mr. Minart, shouting again, and it just happens to hit me right in the neck. Holding up the other rubber band, he said, what about this one, the one stuck on my sweater? I suppose you were aiming this at the lights, too? The principal stood up. Mr. Minart, please, there's no need to shout. I'd like you to go back to your classroom now. Is anyone there supervising the children? Well, no, said Mr. Menard, but, but, this was, it was an attack. It was an emergency. Mr. Richards nodded. I understand what you're saying, and we'll get it all sorted out, but you need to get back to your classroom. I'll deal with Hart. Mr. Menard turned, gave Hart a last angry look, and stomped out of the office. Mr. Richards sat back down in his chair. Hart looked across the desk at him. Really? I, I didn't mean to hit him. In the first shot, I aimed it at his music stand, and then the rubber band bounced onto his sweater. It just bounced. That's the way it happened, I swear. I wasn't trying to hit anybody. Mr. Richards looked at Hart a long moment and then said, I believe you, that hitting him was an accident, but there's no excuse for shooting rubber bands in the first place. If that rubber band had hit Mr. Minart in the eye, we'd be looking at a big problem here. Do you have any more? Hart dug into his pocket and then dumped the rubber bands onto the desk. How about in your locker? Hart shook his head. No, that's all I have. Mr. Richards said, I'll... I'm keeping you after school today and tomorrow. Come here to the office, and I expect you to bring homework or a book to read. Is that clear? Hart nodded, and then he said, Um, can, can I call my mom? She doesn't get home until half hour after I do, and she doesn't like my little sister to be alone after school. Mr. Richards glanced at his watch. Hmm, I see. In that case, you can serve your detention starting tomorrow. Tell your parents that you'll be staying after school for one hour, both tomorrow and Friday, and tell them why. And no more rubber bands at school. Understood? Hart nodded, and then he said, So, c can I go now? Mr. Richards nodded. Yes, you may go. Hart left the principal's office, but as he reached the door to the hallway, Mr. Richards called, Wait, Hart. Hart stopped and turned back, and Mr. Richards said, Did you leave any belongings in the music room? Hart shook his head. No, my, my book bag's in my locker. Mr. Richards pointed at the long bench against the wall at the main office. Then, I want you to sit right there until the period is over. Hart said, Okay, and he walked over and sat down. After Mr. Richard, after Mr. Richards shut his door, Hart turned and looked up over his shoulder until he could see the clock above him. It was 1.44. That meant he had nine minutes to wait and think. At first, all Hart could think about was the crazed, angry look on Mr. Menard's face. The guy had totally flipped out. Considering everything, Hart felt like he'd gotten off easy, and he felt like Mr. Richards was a pretty good guy. He felt like the principal had saved him from Mr. Menard. The principal was smart, too, because Hart understood why the man had told him to wait in the office until the period was over. Mr. Richards didn't think it would be a good idea for Hart and Mr. Minart to be in the same room again, at least not right away, and Hart agreed. Completely.